podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to The Paddock and the Pavilion with Stephen Wallace. In each show, Stephen will interview someone connected to the world of horse racing or cricket. Hello everyone. On today's podcast, I'm delighted to welcome back Natalie O'Rourke, the manager of Park Lane Stables, who has a busy week ahead. Hello again, Natalie. Hello, Stephen. Thank you for having me on. Well, you featured uh, way back now in episodes 29 and 36. Uh, We're in the 120s now. And it's over a year ago since you were last on the podcast. And at that time, we were talking about the 35,000 people who had just saved Park Lane Stables. Now, a lot has happened since then. You've got an MBE for one. You've won awards. The Sun Who Cares wins awards. You've moved temporarily, and now you've got a book out, Only Heroes and Horses. How excited are you about the, the book's release on Thursday, May the 26th? Um, I'm really, really excited. It all feels very surreal. Um, I just have to keep pinching myself and thinking, is this really happening? Because um, I'm sure you'll remember the sort of tight spot that I was in and how dark and bleak everything seemed. So now it just yeah it just feels incredible that that this is happening and um it's a chance for us to thank the 30 odd thousand people that that made it happen really so they're they're the heroes of the story and of course the horses are the heroes too well you've agreed to do a a a sort of longer podcast in say a month or two's time but today we're just going to concentrate on a a few short things about the book but what and then what an inspiring story you've got to tell. Can you let listeners know a brief summary of what they've got to look forward to? Yeah, sure. I try not to spoil it for them. So um, it's essentially the story of when I arrived in London. I used to live in Birmingham, which won't come as a surprise from my accent. Um, and then I came to London in 2008. And it's essentially... Um, what happened from then on and then a little bit of background about my childhood because I'm not from a horsey background at all so I'm slightly unusual in the horse world that um, my parents didn't ride or anything like that I just found a love for horses and and never fell out of love with them um so yeah it's a little bit of background from from the beginning um and then essentially how I came to have the stables in Teddington and um and how i saved it i guess with the help of um all the people that supported me well i can't wait to get the book myself i've got it on order but what have you got planned over the next couple of weeks even this week especially uh this week's quite crazy um i'm going to manchester on wednesday afternoon um to salford um be live on the sofa on Thursday morning on BBC Breakfast. So I've only done TV where they've come to the stables, which is um, an environment that I'm 100% comfortable in. So going in a TV studio is going to be um, a first for me. Um, but very excited to be able to thank the viewers of BBC Breakfast because essentially without them it it really wouldn't have happened Um, so it's really lovely that they're giving me that opportunity then I'm coming back to London and um, we've got a book launch at a local hotel and then on Friday um, a good friend of mine is doing a 24-hour walk for the Ukraine and I'm taking a horse along to that not to walk for 24 hours I might add um, but we're going to do an hour or so with her um, just to lift her spirits really um, and get her a bit of um, attention from the public. Um, and then on Friday and Saturday, Trigger and I, Trigger's our little Connemara RDA pony with book signings. Um, so Trigger and I are going hot footing it around London um, to do book signings. So, And then the following week is the Jubilee week and we've got a big party here at the stables. So yeah, we've got a busy time. It's always busy here, but uh, the next 10 days or so is busier than ever. It sounds like it. So are you going to be on the sofa then with Nagger and Charlie? Is that who you're with? Yeah, I hope so. I think so, because 
um, this Thursday it was Naga and Charlie, so I'm thinking it will be Naga and Charlie. And when we were on the TV, when uh, Fiona Lambdin used to come to the stables, it was always Naga that was in the studio. Um, but we've ne I've never actually met her. I've only sort of spoken to her um, over a screen. So it would be really, really lovely to meet her. So, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping it's Naga, but I don't mind who it is, really. It's just and an exciting opportunity. And you said for your book launch on Thursday, you've got uh, Nick Luck um, yeah. doing the question and answer. And Nick was a very big, big driver for the for the Save the Stables campaign, wasn't he? Yeah, absolutely. And without giving too much away about the book, he, he has got a chapter in the book um, because uh, when really hardly anyone was listening to me, Nick Luck actually did listen to me. And he sort of believed in me and got behind me, which got the racing community to support me. Um, so he's a really big part of the story. And um, on Thursday, um, uh, there's a local digital newspaper. So they've paid for the launch for us. And they asked Nick if he would come and do the questions. And he's actually said yes. So I'm really delighted um, that, that Nick will be there because, as I say, he's a big part of the success of the campaign. Well, well, listening to the Nick Luck Daily, that was how I found about you and, and Park Lane Stables. So I'm sure you'll be back on the Nick Luck Daily and probably on Racing TV again, actually. I hope that because there's a lot of people that donated money um, and they might not um, necessarily listen to the mainstream media, but they, they would listen to Nick. So I hope that he gives me that chance to thank those people as well. And talking about all this media coverage, do are you less overwhelmed than when you first were? Well, you must be getting used to it now. Uh, yeah, this is slightly different, though, because before it was sort of fighting for survival. So it, it, there wasn't much chance to think about um, that. I wasn't worried about doing it because it was, it was, you know, that was my chance. So I just got on with it. This is slightly different. Um, and as people who know me well know that I love to wear my cap. Um, naked without my cap on and I'm not allowed to wear my cap in the TV studio so that's a bit traumatic for me <laughs> the cap will be removed and my hair will be washed um so yeah it's slightly different scenario but but um but I'm happy to do it and I recently a week ago actually I got interviewed by the i newspaper and one of the questions that he asked me was you know why do you make times why do you make time for journalists and media and I said because I really strongly want to get the message out there that horses are for everybody and this is my chance so you know talking to yourself and talking to the eye for example we're reaching people that might not think that horses are for them and I just really want to get that message out and say you you can get involved in you know whatever level you want to that they're for everybody I think that's really important in, in city areas because I've been in contact with people at the Ebony Horse Club. I've spoken to O'Shane, who went there, and the Urban Equestrian Academy, where I've spoken to Canaan, and of course Park Lane Stables, where uh, people living in cities have then got opportunities that they wouldn't have without those three organisations, and, and I'm sure there are other ones as well around the country. Yeah, there are. Um, you know, the, the Liverpool they have Park Palace ponies, and you know, there's lots of people like myself you know, trying to get horses into people's lives. So I just feel um, really privileged that I've got the opportunity to, to use national media to get people talking about horses and thinking about horses. And, and I think a lot of public perception is that horses are for privileged people. And I'm just really trying to move the conversation away from that and the fact that it's for everybody. So that's really what I want to use my MBE to do is... To, to have a voice and 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 get that message out there really strongly um so that that's what i'm trying to achieve with the with the book and the media really well they're very good aims um some listeners might not know that you've actually haven't moved back to park lane stables because you're now at, uh, at petersham aren't you when 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 are you planning to move back to park lane well we we're, we're sort of in the hands of the builders really because um the building is really, really old, so it wasn't it wasn't designed with horse welfare in mind. 
um, all those hundreds of years ago. And it definitely wasn't designed with um, people with disabilities in mind. So what we're trying to do is make the building um, better from a forced welfare perspective and also better for our people with additional needs. So that is taking a bit of time. Um, but when we go back, we will be back forever and we're going to be able to help more people. Um, so, yeah, it's taking, a, it's taking a moment, but it's going to be worth it. Well, I went along to Petersham. It must have been probably six, eight weeks ago and had a, a lovely day there and met Louis and Becca, who I saw before we came on air, um, and your commercial director, Nina Bradburn, um, had lunch with me, myself and, and you. And I also met people like Prodney and Dougie, <laughs> yeah, who, oh, Shane, one of our guests, uh, rode uh, at Ascot. And uh, actually, this is the first podcast I think I've done with you without other guests. Last one I was listening the other day, and we had Elliot and Lily were on the podcast with you. So it's unusual to not get background noise with podcasts. Yeah, I, well, they are making a bit of a racket outside, so I'm surprised you can't hear them because I'm just sitting in a stable that's been converted into an office. So I have got a horse by the side of me and I can hear them chomping away, but it's good if you can't hear them. You kindly agreed to do another podcast once, well, to first, but I'm going to have to read the book and uh, prepare to, to speak to you again uh, hopefully in the next couple of months but thanks again for squeezing us in ahead of a very busy couple of weeks uh, and good luck with the book only heroes and horses it's available at all good bookstores and uh, i've ordered it and i can't wait to get it and i'm sure i'll be receiving it um, probably on friday the 27th yeah i hope so I hope, I hope you enjoy it and, um, yeah, we get we manage to get the right message across. Well, thank you very much again for joining us on The Paddock and the Pavilion. Thank you. Thank you for listening to The Paddock and the Pavilion. You can download the show on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, SoundCloud, Stitcher and Spotify. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram at The Pad and Pav. Don't forget, if you like the show, please do leave us a rating and review. Social Podcast Network. Looking for a fun way to win 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash play100 and use code play100. That's code play100 at prizepicks.com slash play100 for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy.